Welcome to another conversation with HPQ Silicon after they've put out the new press release. Um, we are happy to welcome the company's CEO, Bernard Tourillon. Mr. Tourillon, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. So let's talk about this new press release. Um, HPQ Silicon and Pyrogenesis signed an agreement to develop a new environmentally friendly process to manufacture fume silica. We've discussed fume silica before because you guys put out a press release, I think about a month ago, um, announcing that you guys would now be producing, would be venturing into producing fume silica. And this is the official second press release that actually gives us a roadmap and announces uh, uh, something to that uh, matter. But um, let's, let's start with this uh, um, few points because the press release opens with um, a few very impactful um, um, bullet points that I think summarize the entire release. Um, and it says, I was just, I'm just gonna read it. Um, New process perfectly aligned with ESG principles sought by end buyers and investors. And you go on to list the, the, the three points. But um, I just want to pick up one point from, from the listing. You said it resolves, so this process resolves ESG roadblocks by developing new markets for fume silica. Now, how important is ESG today? Um, I think it's starting to take the, um, the importance that's required in the sense that uh, without ESG principle, uh, it used to be, you know, uh, buyers beware, damn it, I'll get the cheapest material, whatever the consequences are. ESG brings about a more uh, complete thinking about, okay, uh, are all my actions in coordination of what I say publicly? So that, you know, those are general terms. Uh, the implication for, for companies like HQ or many companies right now is that it is no longer the stakeholder that was the shareholders uh, driven regard the profitability that will dictate a lot of the decision taken here. It is all the stakeholders taken together that will act uh, hopefully in the right direction. So if ESG principles are followed, are environmental points are very, very there, societal. So basically what's the impact of society of the process and governance, you have correct governance. In this specific case, the, the fume silica process we're looking at will have a massive impact on the environment. Um, we already know um, um, your longtime partner, Parigenesis, but this press release focuses on one of your subsidiaries, HPQ Silicon Pervere Inc. And am I pronouncing that uh, well? Close enough. Correctly? Since neither of us are Italian, we cannot pronounce it correctly. So <laughs> okay. All right, I'll go with Povere. And um, so tell us about this subsidiary and how its operations fit in the larger uh, HPQ picture. Okay. Uh, when you have a new venture like this one, which is sort of a, an expansion, another verticality to what HPQ is, um, it is better to, to, from the start to put it into a standalone company because you really never know... Um, you never really know what's going to happen in, in the development in the future or, or what's going to be required of the company. So, uh, you know, we, we've learned from, from past experiences, if you ever, ever need flip or an idea, you might, you know, this might become a self-sustaining company on, your, on its own. Might as well start from the beginning, because if not, then the auditors will make you go back to the beginning to do it. So it's really a much more easier way for us to do our business, to plan our business, to separate every business line, separate every investment when we talk to the board, and make everything look as a profit center eventually. These are R&D companies with different verticalities, but it simplifies us looking at the project and, and the financial value, and it allows us to have a brand-specific product because uh, HPQ is a technology incubator. So we have many technologies that we are developing, at least three that people know there's a, there's a working line. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we have the PureVap one, which is not really a company per se, but it's within HPQ, that's what HPQ is. There's HPQ Nano, which yeah. is the one responsible for making the, uh, the silicone powders, either Nano or Micros. And then there's Silica Pulveris now, which is gonna be one taking over fume silica. 
Not to be confused with silica fume. I know it's very close, but it's not the same product at all. So, which just um, brings me to my next question, uh, because I know some of us are familiar with uh, uh, film silica, but um, let's hear from the horses or not, you know, take us a little bit back um, to the basics. What is film silica? And, you know, and the, the question specifically, um, I would like you to tailor your answer towards, you know, what this product represents in the industry and, and you know, with regards to its applications. What is fume silica? Fume silica is one of those uh, basically foundations to everyday living that we don't know really exists. It's not a, it's not an end product. You know, you, you don't go basically a end product consumer doesn't go and buy uh, fume silica, mm -hmm. but they'll go and buy products that are derived from it. You know, glue, silicone glues, those type of material. Uh, it's one of those materials that is used on almost everything that we use on a daily basis, but then nobody knows it exists. So because it doesn't have that, how can I say this, you know, one-to-one -one flair between, you know, the, the end, the, the buyer, the end buyer and, and the seller, how it was manufactured, where it was manufactured was sort of an irrelevant concept. It was mostly give me the cheapest material. Also, so the process fume silica basically is an offshoot of this, the, the, the polysilicone industry, which is used to make so solar panels. So mm -hmm. it is the same uh, chemical basis, chemical industry, the, the same heavy industry that requires into it. But at, at the beginning of it, it's completely stupid. You start with SiO2, you convert into SI, and then you burn it up to re reconstitute it back in SiO2. But it's a bit more than that. It has some, you know, there's a lot of specificities on each one of those materials. Yeah. Fundamentally, it's a long chain of work to bring in. You, you start with SiO2 to finish with SiO2, sort of complex, but that's the way it is. But it is, you know, it's used on many, many verticalities, uh, of many industries. Um, so this is where the new ESG principle come really strong into it because the almost as buyer, okay, the one that makes the product that will be bought by the consumer, okay, will now have to take into account the entire environmental, you know, blueprint or ticket or, you know, architecture in his selling of the product. So that becomes much more important and that becomes more public and, and more information. So suddenly, um, and this is what I find great about ESG, is that you can't just sell something because it's the cheapest. You, know, you got to sell, you, you need more than just, you know, the cheapest material because at one point, you know, you sort of get unfair com competitive advantage or, you know, unfair competition that goes on. So this is why I find it very interesting. The ESG and the fume silica business is really important. So um, <clears throat> in, in the press release, you, you, there are two image, uh, uh, I call figures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are two figures. You call them figures. Um, and one of them is a brief, very short, small, straightforward figure. And you guys call that figure one. And then there's another lengthier, a more complicated figure you call figure two. Um, could you just walk us through these two um, mm -hmm. figures and what makes them so different? Well, it's, you know, both pro processes start from quartz, okay, and both processes finish with fume silica. Uh, our process that we're developing with pyrogenesis has only one step, okay? Which is figure one. Which is figure one, okay? And the other process is a series of steps. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. A seven step, okay? Wow. So fundamentally, the difference is, you know, there's six more steps. This is a demonstration of a practical application of plasma's uh, capacity to basically convert a material, SiO2, into fume silica uh, and doing it using plasma as opposed to using a very complex chemical process to make that material. So... That's really the key into it. Now, what's going to be our work is when we have the system operational and working is demonstrating that we can reach the same end product quality that they're using in the industry right now that we'll be replacing. But, you know, who knows? We might even end up designing better product than what they're presently using. At this stage, it's an unknown. 
Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> which means the short, the shorter process is 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 it, it's yours, which is a better process. Now, um, what was written underneath? It, it, you know, for <laughs> like a one step new process from HP2 and pyrogenesis. I think. Yeah. That's it. So lifting a, um, a quote from, from uh, this is just like a sentence that I, I, I cut up, like it says, um, since the new process, uh, which is the new process you just mentioned, uses quartz as feedstock, its capital requirements will only be a f- small fraction of what is required to build a traditional fume silica plant. Uh, now, in your opinion, and since the application for fume silica is so substantial, why hasn't any other producer thought about doing this? I mean, just using quartz till today till now that's a million dollar question but often when you have legacy business that are run by um not monopoly but duopoly tripopoly you know basically a, a, a limited number of big players that play into it um other than the asian producer that's something kind of chinese producer that's something completely else so at one point, they prefer to tinkle with their product, you know, just do some small improvement as opposed to starting from beginning to end. You have to remember that this is a process that's an add-on to a system to make polysilicon that is using the solar energy. So, um, you know, if for them it was, okay, so this is a waste. We figured a way to make a different waste, but make it a material in between. We can get a bit more money. So, you know, that's sort of the way it was. We're looking at it from a completely different perspective, which is, okay, we, you know, we start we start from quartz. We finish with quartz. How can we do this much, much more, um, you know, much more simple? And often uh, innovation, like the, the type of innovation we're bringing forward, is always done by you know, smaller companies like us, R&D companies that um, are foolishly are, are foolish enough to go where no, nobody wants, n- nobody went before. So I'm not saying we're foolish about this, it's just we looked at the problem differently. I think Peter even has swag that says, you know, we don't, we're not limited by the box, we redefine the box, and that's really what it is. We redefine the box of what the question was with Team Silicon. Yeah. Of course, uh, I probably massacred once again one of Peter's cool. So <laughs> basically, that's my tradition. So um, energy, let's talk about energy. Energy seems to be a big deal um, with respect to, to the manufacturing of film silica. Why does it need that much energy and how um, is your process more efficient? Now, first of all, does it need more energy than some other type of process? Or um, is it just a, a, a matter of making the existing process more energy efficient. No, no, no. It's, it's the as I told you, the existing process comes out of the solar industry, and as you know, because you know we we've talked about this because we want it to be in the in the green metallurgy production of silicon. It is the energy requirements to convert the silicon metal. Well, first of all, the first the first transformation requires twelve thousand kilowatt hours per ton. The second one requires something like 98,000 kilowatt hours per ton because it's all those different processes are energy intensive, right? So in addition to for us removing all those processes, we basically re- logically reduce the, the energy requirement of the entire process. Um, it's sort of funny. We're replacing a series of processes by energy, but at the end, we end up using less energy. So it demonstrates a much more efficient way of doing it. Mm. Um, and, and, and that's really what it is. It, energy here is the key, because then you get into the greenhouse emission, you know, conundrum, okay? Is it pollution, not pollution? Who cares? Fundamentally, if you use 86% energy, your product will be cheaper to make it. It's, it's not very difficult to, to calculate. So our efficiencies, our gain that we get are, are massive, but 86%, reducing the energy requirements by 86% is, is uh, breathtaking. So um, and this, this is a question that has, uh, I've just been thinking about this since, since I read this press release is, um, what's the difference between, uh, because for some reason, the, the, the applications seem to parallel or overlap each other. So what's the difference between um, high purity silicon metal and film silicon? Well, it's massive. Um, <laughs> well, it's it's massive and sort of like silly. High purity silicone metal is SI, 
Okay, it's just the number of N behind it with regard to the purity. Fume silica is SiO2. That's basically made in this special, special, you know, chemical composition, how it is made, but it's SiO2, it's fundamentally quartz. So it's fundamentally the raw ingredient transformed into a different material to be that, that has a massive other application. It is it is that the traditional process that they're doing it basically use a speed stock SI or SI. So basically you have SiO2, converted SI, and that SI is basically, you know, you dissolve it in acid. Uh, you, you know, so you create silicone tetrachloride. And then you, you, you know, you combine that silicone tetrachloride with, with uh, oxygen and hydrogen and, lo and, and you burn that stuff and lo and behold, you get fume silica. And of course you get HCI, which is very nasty from the environment. So it's SI, silicone metal, is a, it's the feedstock for the traditional process. In our process, it is not an in intermediary phase. It doesn't, it doesn't get produced. It's SiO2 to SiO2 in the form of fume silica. Um, while silica fume, okay, is the pollution that is created during the process to convert SiO2 into Si, you basically have Si particles that become free during the process, liberate itself, and basically then they, re, they reconnect with oxygen become, and they become silica fume, which is a low end product, which is basically a byproduct of the, the manufacturing of silicon, right? So our pure vap process will produce um, silica, if, uh, silica fume, while our other process will presume fume silica. Those are not the, the, the same product. I know we have a very bad tendency in this industry to use almost the same name at so many different defi definitions, <laughs> different different points. So people says, you know, it'll be used for this. And no, it's not. It's completely, it's a completely different process to make it. Well, Mr. Thurion, thanks again for uh, giving us the top-down um, explanation and view of this press release. And uh, it's, it's, it's always been great to have you here. And uh, um, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.